The Apostle Paul writes to the church at Philippi, and it's recorded in the third chapter of Philippians, the 13th and 14th verse, where he says, one thing I do is forgetting those things that are behind, I press on. This is most certainly an encouragement to Paul himself, but I believe an encouragement to the church at Philippi as well, because often this is what is needed. You know, in our journey, sometimes we grow stagnant. Sometimes we don't seem to move in God as we once did. Well, Moments of Life is an instrument in the hands of God to edify you and strengthen you and encourage you. I look forward to sharing with you every single week as we dive into the Word of God together and move into new revelation, new understanding, new knowledge that's going to increase your application of the Word of God and bring greater fruitfulness into your journey. We're going to go together as we dive into the word moment by moment for these moments of life are just for you. Welcome to Moments of Life. It's Apostle Terrell. And like always, I'm overjoyed to be with you, overjoyed to really know that the Lord is moving greatly in your, your life. And thank you for telling so many people about moments of life. Don't stop doing that. Keep speaking to them and telling them to come and be a part and grow in these devotionals that I believe from what I'm hearing they're very meaty, and they're helping people to connect with Jesus at a deeper level, even in ways that we're unable to connect with him when we come together for church on Sundays. And so uh, make sure you're sharing with as many people as you can. Get it to your friends, your loved ones, even get it to people who are not saved. They need to understand uh, that God is real and that Jesus is Lord and wants to be the Lord of their lives and walk with them through life, and they can do that with him. So let's just keep moving in what we've been moving in through moments of life the last few times. Uh, just going to close this out today, talking about delighting ourselves in the Lord, based out of Psalm, the 37th chapter, and the fourth verse, where David says, delight yourself in the Lord, and he'll give you the secret petitions, he'll give you the desires of your heart. I will be honest, I have been moving primarily from delighting yourself in the Lord. I think that's the most important important thing that we can do. We thank God for the secret desires. We thank God for the petitions. Uh, but more than anything, what we want from God is him and relationship with him. And I just believe that according to Matthew 6, 33, when you seek that first, everything else follows, everything else moves together. So if we can get the relational part of relationship right with Jesus, we're going to see change in our lives. And we're going to see that who we are begins to shift and change. And we're going to see that what God has for us for the better is beginning to manifest. So again, we've been moving through Psalm 37, 4. I'm trusting that you've been pressing into this to grab a greater understanding, moving yourself into a place where you are desiring the greater things of Lord by delighting yourself in him, that you are delight, you're desiring the greater thing, and that greater thing is knowing him. So delighting yourself in the Lord, there's many reasons for why we should delight ourselves in the Lord, and we could build a laundry list, and I would encourage you to do that in your study time and in your prayer time by yourself. Take these things that I'm sharing today and then start looking and say, what are other ways that I could learn to delight myself in the Lord? What we always want of Scripture is a working knowledge of the Scripture. We want to learn to walk through it. Uh, that's going to be the key when challenge comes, temptations come, persecutions come, difficulties. Am I able to walk through a particular scripture? And now can I go reference that scripture and walk through it in my time of need? Moments of life in our last time together, we talked about delighting ourselves in the Lord. And so I said I was going to share more with you this time. And now this time is here. So let me do that. Some ways I think that we can do better so that you've got some practical application to this concept. Ways that we can delight ourselves in the Lord. Number one is to be impressed with Jesus. Many people are not as impressed with Jesus as you would think they were. Uh, but when we look at him, he has so much uh, to make available to us and has made available to us. He has so much that we could not help but see how awesome he is. He does so much. He is so much. One place to begin in discovering more about how awesome he is is in the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. All four of them have a different perspective of how they see Jesus, and they mix that together to create the Gospels. Each one had a different audience that they were writing to. What were they trying to do? They were showing people how awesome he really, really is. And so that's always a great place to start if you want to get a greater understanding of 
what it is to know him and then delight myself. And what, here's one thing that I do when I look in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I read them and then I become amazed at the life of Jesus. And in being amazed at the life of Jesus, I start pondering him. I start pondering his greatness. And then here's the relational part of it. I start talking to him about his greatness. I start talking to him about what he did. What, what was that like, Jesus? How did you feel when that happened? Man, that must have been an awesome thing that you were experiencing at that time. Well, that sounds a little crazy to some of you. Yeah, because it's about relationship. And that's not what most of the body of Christ is doing. Most of us are speed reading through scriptures, but we're not getting into Jesus. And that's what all about knowing him is, is how do I come into a greater place of admiring him through his word? How do I become into a greater place of relationship? Talk to him about his word. Intimacy is me talking with him about the things he's done, the things that he is. And you know what? Sometimes he answers, sometimes he doesn't. But that's okay. I'm with him. And when he sees fit to answer me, he will answer me. And when he doesn't, if he doesn't ever want to answer me, that's fine. He won't answer me, but he'll never be able to say that I wasn't inquisitive of him and I wasn't trying to generate relationship and communication and talk time with my Lord. Another thing that we can do uh, in order to delight ourselves in the Lord is learn to lean on him. I've shared before that the promise of Jesus for those who draw nigh to him, he says, I'll draw nigh to you. Let me take some of that King James language out of there, that word nigh. He says, look, if you come after me, I'm going to come after you. If you'll get close to me, I'm going to get close to you. And, and what happens when you draw nigh to him and he draws nigh to you, you will feel satisfaction in you activated. You'll begin to feel okay. You'll begin to feel like, oh, this is it right here. You, you'll begin to actually experience that when you draw nigh to him, when you, when you lean on him. You'll feel the satisfaction that comes from being wrapped up in him. I remember when I was just a, a young boy, my dad would be watching TV and he'd be sitting in his chair and I would uh, get in the chair with him. And I, I actually remember putting my head on his heart, on his stomach area, his midsec, and, and I, I would try to breathe in the same way that he was breathing. I just wanted to be close to him. And he didn't have to say anything. He didn't have to do anything. Just let me get up there where you are. And, th and that was so pleasing and so good to me. But that's what Jesus is after, is that you find that you get into those places where, like I was with my dad, I was totally satisfied. I had all the pleasure in the world because I was with my father who art in his recliner. <laughs> but, but I was with my father, and it was, it was good for me, and it was good for him. God responds to those who are hungry for him. He responds to those who are thirsty for him. Another way that we learn to delight in God is delight in his help. You can ask God for his help. He says to ask, to seek, and to knock. We don't delight out of, the duty of, uh, out of the duty of religion. We move into the ways of relationship. Jesus has been made unto us one that is totally irresistible if we come to know him. And he's fully irresistible and he wants to be brought into every area of your life. He wants to be there. Whatever the hardship is, whatever the challenge is, whatever you might feel overwhelmed about, he wants to be there. He wants to be in the negotiations with the next deal. He, he, like he asked Moses, Moses, what's in your hand? And Moses begins to do and move with what's in his hand. Jesus wants to be in what's in your hand. He wants to, to move with you through it. He wants to show you the kingdom way of it. He wants to show you how it can become more fruitful and more meaningful, how it can be more sustaining and impactful. He wants all of that if you'll just let him in. When you come into that place where you begin to bring him into everything, anywhere you exist, anything that raises its head against you, anything that comes against you of temptation or that is against the knowledge of God, he will be there to help you. And he says, you can discover me in a fresh new way. You know something, y'all? Every shift in life and every matter in life is a means to connect with him. We have hardship. We have things that are overwhelming to us, but that's to bring him into them. And when you bring him in, you talk to him about it. You don't complain. You don't whine. 
You just talk to him about it. You let him know where it is and how it is. And if you need to whine, cool, but don't make your, your time with him all about whining and complaining all the time. Make it about interaction with him that's going to lead you into wisdom and into knowledge and into direction. And as we begin to do that, it opens up more dialogue with the Savior. That, my friend, creates greater relationship. And then lastly, we can learn to delight in his love. One thing that I, I seek hard to do every day and try to help people do is never take for granted the love of Jesus. Never take for granted that for he so loved the world that he gave his life to you. Never take for granted the fact that he has a kingdom that he has built and established with God for you. Never allow the religious of the kingdom or the religious of uh, uh, the religiosity of kingdom duty cause you to become familiar with him. Don't ever, because you've been in this a long time, think I know everything about him. That will keep you from talking to him. That will keep you from connecting with him. It should never be that we have a sense of entitlement to him. It should always be I'm trying to gain more out of my love relationship with you. That's the way it should be. This is what God wants for us because he loves us. There are so many things the Lord wants to reveal to you, and, and Paul says it in Ephesians 3, 18, 19. I'm going to look at that, and then we're going to close this out for today. He says this in, in, in Ephesians, the third chapter and the 18th verse, one of my favorite scriptures because of the, the liberating uh, effect that it has on the believer. Verse 18 in chapter 3 says of Ephesians, that you may have the power uh, is that where I want to be? I think it is. Romans 3, 18. Let me just start. Yeah, I'll do 18. May Christ through your faith. No, I'll start at 18. That you may have the power and be strong to apprehend and grasp with all the saints, God's devoted people, the experience of that love. It's a love that is founded for us. And Paul says, I want you to know the breadth of that love, the length of that love, the height of that love the depth of that love, the ways of that love. And then you go on and say, why? Verse 19 makes it clear that you may really come to know practically through experience for yourselves the love of Christ, which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience that you may be filled through all your being unto the, all the fullness of God may have the richest measure of the divine presence and become a body wholly filled and flooded with God himself. Self. This is the all of the love of God. This is the humility that we should approach his love in. That it is a love that wants to fill us, embrace us, consume us, overtake us, reveal itself to us, show us what that love is really, really like. And from that love, we discover mercy. From that love, we discover passion. And we see how God really cares for us. Lamentations tells us that his mercies are new each and every day. And we can run into them. Why? Because he loves us like he does. That mercy and compassion is what keeps me in relationship with him because I miss the mark. And I handle people and places and things in ways that I shouldn't. But the mercy and compassion of him to take me back always is a door opening to greater intimacy, greater relationship, greater connectivity, all centered in love in Christ Jesus. I want you to understand and know that when you begin to love him and you begin to understand the love that he has for you and you start delighting in that love, it births worship in you. It births edification of him. It births adoration of him. Things just begin to flow out of your mouth. They begin to flow out of your spirit in celebration of the love that we have in God, knowing we're not worth it, knowing we, don't, we are worth it because of who we are in him, but knowing that we can't deserve it, knowing that it's only he who can do it, knowing that he has to instigate all of it, and he does because he loves us. I delight in that, and I find great joy in it. I find great satisfaction in it, and I find great purpose in it. Delight yourself in the Lord and watch your desires become exactly what he wants you to desire, nothing more and nothing less. And the good work he's begun in you, he will perform it until the day of Christ. Father, take hold of your sons and daughters by love, by mercy, by compassion. And through these things that we've talked about, God, that they may learn to delight in them, let them lean into him. Let them discover him in new levels. 
Let them allow themselves to be impressed with him. Let them experience his love. Let them know him through fellowship, through communication, through conversation, that we would be equipped and be prepared that, to be those that God would say, they're my own, and now I can use them to manifest my kingdom in the earth. In Jesus' name we pray and call it done and so. In Jesus' precious name, we love and adore him. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much. See you next time. Over and out. Peace.